And with St. Croix Hospice, so some may encounter me, hopefully. I mean, it's, it's all it's such a great ministry to be part of, so um, hopefully it's a blessing to you if you've encountered hospice in any way. Um, and you get me for two Sundays, so the pressure's on. <laughs> Next Sunday, from what I read, is jazz. So that sounds like fun. So tell your friends to come to church to not only see Pastor Kate, but also for jazz. And I think that should be fun. Right? Happy Father's Day to all you fathers or father figures. If you don't have kids of your own, chances are you're a father figure in some way. Whether it be uncle, godfather, brother, father figure. So happy Father's Day to you. Are there any other...
God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Seeking reconciliation with God and neighbor, let us remember the gift of baptism and confess our sin. God of mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, against one another, and against the earth entrusted to our care. We are worried and distracted by many things, and we fail to love you above all else. We store up treasures for ourselves and turn away from our neighbors in need. Forgive us that we may live in the freedom of our Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we were laid low by sin and guilt, God made us alive together with Christ, forgiving us all our trespasses by taking our sins to the cross. For freedom Christ has set us free. Rejoice in this good news. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Together we pray. O Lord God, we bring before you the cries of a sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us from everything that is evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. The first lesson is found in Isaiah 65, verses 1 through 9. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found out by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call my name. I held out my hands all day long to rebellious people who walked in a way that is not good, following their own devices a people who provoked me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things in their vessels, who said, keep to yourselves, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. Those are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord. <clears throat> because they offered incense on the mountains and reviled me on the hills, I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servants' sake and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah's inheritors of my mountains. My choice shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Okay, the reading then responsibly from Psalms is Psalms 22, verses 19 through 28. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen. You have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation, and I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All the offspring of Jacob glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear me. The 
All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For the to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is coming out of um, Galatians, chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Now before the faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now the faith has come. We are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. All of you, all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offsprings, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then they arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion. For many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd was rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. He is a tortured man. His hair is disheveled and matted. His beard appears shaggy and filled with debris, such as dirt, sticks, and a mess of food that fell out of his mouth as he ate. His eyes stare saucer like and hypnotic. You can tell that there's a madman inside. He beats and cuts himself with sharp rocks until blood flows, clots, and then flows again. Blue bruises dot his skin like a leopard spots. He lives in the cemetery because that's the only place where he's welcomed. His only friends are ones he imagined. 
The garrison citizens try to contain him, but their shackles and chains crack and break by his strange and superior strength. Visitors to the town just plain avoid the area. They are clearly afraid. The local villagers know the situation is beyond their scope. Luckily for the wild man, a stranger approaches. What is your name, Jesus asks. Legion, he shouts back, for he knows many, many demons entered him and possessed him. Since legion represents 6,000 soldiers in a typical Roman army, darkness is truly in charge. That is his name. As we have entered into a modern age with more rational minds steered by science and discovery, we easily have dismissed demon possession, the devil, and evil spirits. However, that has not stopped our fascination. In 1968, a movie, Rosemary's Baby, based on the novel by Ira Levin, stirred our imaginations. Another movie, The Exorcist, in 1973, portrayed a sensational, shocking horror story about devil possession and the exorcism of demon spirits from a young, innocent girl of divorced parents. That was just the start. It seems like these days, horror movies about evil spirits, our possession, or possession, are just always in the theaters, and people continue to be mystified by them. But that's fiction, right? Well, who's to say? As I said before, in this modern age, we have become skeptical about demons and dark forces, even though we may be fascinated by it. Our understanding of physical and mental health has changed dramatically. Whereas back then, if you had leprosy, you were shunned and forbidden from community because you were seen as dangerous. If you had epilepsy, you had a demon. If you had bipolar or schizophrenia, you also had a demon. But does modern understanding of medical issues take away the power of this story? Do demons truly exist? Have you ever heard the phrase, my inner demons, or my personal demon? I seem to use this phrase to explain when I'm having a hard day and my self-esteem is ultra low. My inner demons are telling me I'm not good at what I do that I'm less than, that I'm not worthy of being loved. And I say this not to gain sympathy from you, but it's a real thing, and it needs to be named. After all, the demons slash demons in today's gospel had a name, Legion. Pastor Nadia Boltz Weber named her demon, her depression, Francis. She writes in her book, Accidental Saints, Francis first stopped by in my teens and early 20s and was written off by my family as me being moody. But later, when I found myself coming to like the same things Francis liked, booze, emotionally unstable boyfriends, self-destruction, she finally moved in, turning my studio apartment into a wilderness. She was a terrible roommate. She kept the place filthy and always told me devastating things about myself. When Francis lived with me, I was no longer able to do simple things like remembering if I'd showered or shopped for groceries. I'd stand far too long looking at the dairy case, unable to make a decision about yogurt, and 20 minutes later would just leave the store empty-handed and hungry. Francis distracted me so much that I would forget to eat. Four or five months later, when my pants had gone down a couple of sizes, my parents started to worry. One day, my mother, Peggy, realized that Francis was my problem and suggested I go talk to a nice lady therapist about evicting her. She's a bit of a dope fiend, Francis, but it ends up there is one drug that she doesn't like. It's called Welbutrin. Two weeks after my therapist prescribed it, she was gone, but not for good. Now, 20 years later, she still knows how to find me and sometimes shows up unannounced and stays a couple days, even though I'm, I'm now into so many things she hates, 
like sobriety, exercise, community, eating well, and of course, Jesus. So given my history with Francis, maybe demons having their own names and saying things out loud to Jesus is not so foreign after all. Demons torment. Demons, whether it be depression demons, low self-esteem demons, anger demons, addiction demons, dark past demons, whatever they are, they need to be named. They need to be dealt with. Rest assured that our demons are afraid. There are things they do not like. Pastor Nadia had her list. It ended with Jesus. Why? Because Jesus has the power. Legion cried out, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high? Jesus has something to do with them. That's why our demons are afraid. Jesus comes in and makes that man whole again. He reminds him of his self-worth. Our demons aim to keep us from remembering that we are loved, that we are worth it. As Pastor Nadia says, our demons want nothing to do with the love of God in Christ Jesus because it threatens to obliterate them. And so they try to isolate us and tell us that we're not worth it to be called children of God. After Jesus sent the demons into the swine herd, the deranged man was free from demons, but so much more. He was restored back into community. He had been isolated before, which is what the demons wanted. He had been alone, deranged, as some would say, and in pain. Perfect conditions to be messed with, to be away from fearful people. But now he was restored. He was able to be with his own people perhaps to regain his original name, to be free to receive a calling to tell others about how much God had done for him and how much he is loved and they are loved. When we deal with our demons, we are embarrassed and ashamed. We don't want anyone to know our internal pain. We want to isolate ourselves. The demon inside wants us to suffer alone so it can work its damaging deeds. It is important to name our demons. Name those demons and remember Legion, who is set free. Remember those demons are fearful. Fearful of someone way more powerful than they are. They don't want you to know that you are loved. They don't want you to know you are worth it. They don't want you to be around others. They don't want you to be free. Jesus comes and liberates you. He breaks those shackles and sets you free from those inner demons of anger, addiction, depression, pan, pained past, or whatever demons you've named, so that you can know how loved you are, and you can tell everyone about what Jesus has done. It may be legend, but the story about Abraham Lincoln to me, seems pretty true and seems pretty cool. Lincoln went down to a slave block. He saw a young slave girl. He took money from his pocket and bought her. When the purchase was made, she heard the words, young lady, you are free. She said, please, sir, what does that mean? Lincoln said, it means you are free. Does that mean, she asked, that I can say whatever I want to say? Lincoln said, yes, my dear, you can say whatever you want to say. Does that mean, she asked, that I can be whatever I want to be? Lincoln said, yes, you can be whatever you want to be. She asked, does that mean I can go wherever I want to go? He said, yes, you can go wherever you want to go. The girl, with tears streaming down her face, said, then I will go with you. Just like this little girl, we are liberated, we are free, and we are inspired to be with Christ, who reminds us of our powerful identity as a loved and worthy child of God. That's why our demons fear him. Now we are free to follow him and tell everyone how much God has done for us. Amen.
And we sing, I love to tell the story. as you are able. With the whole church, we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church those in need, and all of God's creation. Holy God, 
You hear the cries of those who seek you. Equip your church with evangelists to reveal the continuous call of your outstretched hands and your promises of a home in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of the earth. Restore places where land, air, and waterways have been harmed. Guide us to develop and implement sources of energy and food production that do not destroy the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. On this Juneteenth observation, guide us continually toward the end of oppression in all its forms. Bring true freedom and human flourishing to all your beloved children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, naked, hungry, and sick. Bring peace to any experiencing mental illness that they may clearly recognize your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. Comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful departed whose lives proclaimed all you had done for them. At the last, unite us with them as we make our home in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you hear the prayers of your people even before they are spoken. We commend these and all our prayers to you, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with the offering. You may be seated. Please rise as you are able. Together we pray. Blessed are you, O God, for the greening earth given for all, for the talents we are given to share, and for this bread and wine. Transform us to be the body of Christ, that feasting on this food and drink, our lives may reflect your generosity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated.
Please rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Together we pray the post-communion prayer. O oh God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Live your lives in Christ, rooted and built up in him, and abound in thanksgiving. And the blessing of the Holy Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Trust in Christ. Committed to Christ, having compassion for others, and a community of faith. Thanks be to God.